We live surrounded by boxes. We build boxes, we buy boxes, we smash boxes and throw them away. We step over boxes, we store things inside boxes. We live in boxes, we drive in boxes, we play with boxes. We hear what they have to say. We store representations of life in boxes. We are life inside boxes. We create with boxes and we try to get out of the boxes. Today, we're making very simple boxes to hold a bit of life. So let's get started. We can use many materials to make planters, but as long as we don't hurt the life inside the box with chemicals, we're good. So this is a very simple build and I picked up some leftover pieces of wood from the shed flooring. There are lots of different ways to make a box and for these ones I cut 45 degree angles but you can make it even easier and quicker by using simple butt joints. I can tell you right away that a couple days later the joints started to warp so I actually disassembled everything and cut off the ends and butt jointed everything. You get that in the end of the video. Pine wood is not the ideal choice for an outdoor project that is dealing with lots of moisture, but it was what I had on hand. So if you can, pick up a better type of wood. To hold the bottom boards, I decided to make some rabbits on the router table and this way the joints will be hidden in the bottom. I assembled everything with the help of a frame clamp and used some stainless steel screws to hold the joints tight. I cut the bottom pieces to size and screw them as well in the rabbits. Place two little blocks inside to keep the bottom pieces reasonably lined over time and make sure to keep a gap in the middle to allow them to expand and for the water to run. I give the boxes a little sanding and apply two coats of Danish oil. This is not incredibly protective but it's food safe and super easy to apply. While the finish is drying, I'll start preparing my labels to carve. This is Easel Pro, which is the brand new version of Inventable software. And this Pro version is paid, but has some amazing features that you can get with a free version. So there are some really cool new features, and one of them is the V carving. I'll explain a bit better in a few minutes, but basically this allows you to use V-shaped bits in your carving machine in a way that all axes move while carving, which means that you can get all the details of the drawings that you couldn't get with regular flat straight bits. So let's get started on making some three-dimensional labels for the greens that I'm going to place in the planter boxes. First I inserted a square and a circle to make the outer shape. I will attach the labels with one screw each, so I gotta make a countersunk hole for the head of the screw going below the surface. So now I'm only selecting the bigger circle and the square, and with a right click on the mouse I can choose the option Combine, which turns this into a single solid shape. Now I tell the program that I want this shape to be cut on the outline, so I preserve the middle shape for the final result. Okay, so this outline is the only thing in the whole project that is not going to be carved with the V-bit. So now I'm importing my herb drawings, and as you can see, some of them are made out of lots of small parts. So first thing is to combine all those shapes before messing around. 
All right, now that everything is connected the way they should be, I can start picking up each plant and placing it inside the label. I'm also including the names in Portuguese and Easel Pro also comes with a ton of new fonts that you can explore. I chose a fairly complex font so we can get a better sense of what V-carving can do and how those curly shapes work in the end. Let's get a realistic view of our project and see what's the difference between straight bit carving and V carving. Here I selected a tiny straight bit and now let's generate a detailed preview of our carving. This is what it looks like when you use a regular carving function. You can see that the details are gone because there are a lot of lines that are slimmer than the 1 32nd bit. And all goes even worse if I choose a 16th bit. There's nothing really to carve as the bit is too large for this design. So let's choose a V bit and see what happens. Now we can clearly see that this is going to result in a pretty cool effect with all the details I need. By selecting the V carving option is not just changing your router bit to a V bit, so you don't get confused by that. Real V carving makes the machine move differently, so the Z axis makes the bit going up and down at the same time that it moves on the other two axes resulting in different depths as it goes. For slim parts, the carving also goes less deep than for larger areas of the design. Because the bit is shaped as a V, as it goes up, the lines carved are thinner because only the very tip of the bit is removing material and that is what makes all those tiny details happen. Besides getting a preview of what the design looks like, you can also see how long is it going to take to carve and this new feature allows you to play in real or speed it up time a representation of the bit movements. You can see the red lines tracing the path and this can be very helpful, for example, to know where to place the clamps to hold the materials to the machine waste board so you don't crush your bits against the clamps. Here are a few V-bits that Inventable sell on their online store and in this case I will be using a 60 degree quarter inch solid carbide V-bit. I have a sacrificial piece of plywood clamped to the machine waste board and I will be sticking a half inch sheet of this white material called Corian that is a plastic but seems like porcelain and has a marble touch. It's cold like stone but carves really beautifully with no sanding needed afterwards. I wanted to use as much as possible from the Korean sheet and I couldn't have clamps in the surface so that's why I ended up sticking it with double sided tape. Now that I have the bits set to zero point I can plug the machine to the computer and carve my design. But first I need to remove all the label outer shapes because I will carve them after using a straight bit. I made sure to have the dust shoe connected to collect the dust so I don't get Korean dust all over my studio. I can now leave the X-carve alone and continue working on the planters. I attached a couple frame hangers to keep the holding system not very noticeable. I placed some drainage clay in the bottom and all of a sudden the sunshine was gone and it became all foggy and cold so I had to grab a shirt and took a moment to check on the carvings. Let's fill this up with soil and of course all my favorite herbs. Once they were ready, I hang them on a couple screws on the left side of my new shed 
and finalized the labels. I kept the machine in my zero point regarding the X and Y axis and removed the existing bit after bringing the Z axis higher. It's important that you make this with the X car turned on so that the motors are blocked from moving while you change the bit. I inserted a straight bit and realized that I would need to hot glue several points on the working material to the base because I didn't apply as much of the double sided tape as needed. Back to Weasel Pro, I brought the label shape back and deleted all the content so we can now carve only the outlines. I also changed the side of the screw holes so I can now drill all the way through with this straight bit. Everything seems to be very nice, so let's release all the pieces and apply them to the planters. These 3D card labels really give a nice impact on the overall object, as the boxes would be just boring without any of those. I'm really excited with this V-carving feature on Easel Pro and I'm sure I will use it in lots of projects to come. This new feature can give a more professional look to our work and that is super awesome. As you can see, I modified the planters a little bit a few days after because the 45 degree joint started to open and warp, so I disassembled everything to cut the ends straight and then screw them back but jointed. I also sealed the ends with epoxy resin so that the moisture doesn't get absorbed by the end grain. Take a look on the links in the description to know more about Inventables and their products and free software as well as the new Easel Pro. I'm really enjoying incorporating these computer controlled carvings in all kinds of projects and this carving machine is a very important tool in my studio. It just opens up so many possibilities that I wouldn't even consider if I didn't have one of these around. So I'd like to thank Inventables for supporting my ideas and work as well as all my Patreon supporters that are just amazing people. Thank you all for sticking around and I'll catch you guys later.